in this video, we'll take the nested state from the Kanban app we created in the last video, link in the description, and we'll kind of simplify this. So this is kind of complicated. So we'll start out and give each card a UUID by doing yarn add UUID, and then we'll import V4 from UUID. And then we're going to go ahead and change the state of our shape to be more flattened, and that'll make these uh, reducers easier to deal with. So to start in the handle add, I'm going to move the column index as a property of the card and also have another property on the card, card.id, call v4. And then we're just going to call add with just that card instead of the card and the column index since the column index is going to be part of the card. Here on the move left and move right, we'll switch from card index to card ID. And then we'll update the map dispatch to prop. So add just takes in the card now, which encapsulates the card index. And then move no longer takes in a card index, it takes in a card ID. Here in our reducers, go ahead and update the initial state here. So we're just going to have a flattened state of the cards. I'll go ahead and put the columns here, I'll just hard code that for now. And so we'll take the cards out of here. So we're separating these concerns or decoupling them. So the columns is going to be an array of column objects. Could also make that an array of strings. And then here in the reducers, we're going to have an object where the ID is the key and then the value is the, op the, the card object. So it's an object of card objects. And we index into this object by the card ID. So that gives us constant time or big O one lookups. So we'll update this, the state of each card. It, it'll have a card ID and each card will store its column index as a property now. So instead of its location in the parent array, it's, it's actually uh, storing the information about which column contains this card as a property of the card. We'll go ahead and get rid of this entire move method here and we'll simplify that. So we're just going to return the new state, spread the old state in there, and we take in the card ID, not the card index. And then we're going to say override the existing state with a new property of that card ID where there's a new object literal for that card. We'll spread in the, the previous card and override the column index to be column index plus direction. So it's just saying take the card at that card ID and update the, the column index and then, or yep. And then the add method here, we will just spread in the state and basically set the new card based on its ID. So let's go ahead and test this here. And it couldn't possibly have been that easy. Uh, looks like maybe yarn is not running here or a webpack dev server. Okay, so that fixed it to compile, and now we're getting an error. I knew it wouldn't be so easy. So a couple more things we have to update. Here, we don't take in column.cards or map over column.cards. We're, we're going to have a cards property, and we're going to pass the cards in here. Now we're going to have to figure out how to actually get these cards. So we could have something called cards by column, where we index in there with the column index. And in our map state to props, we'll put it into the the nested the nested state that we had before. So this would be called a selector. So this selector, we're going to do cards by column. So we're going to start with getting the object keys of our state, which is going to be the card IDs. So const card ID was object keys, and then the cards. We're going to take the card IDs and map on them, and we're going to map each ID to that card by looking it back up in the state. So now we have an array of cards and we could do cards.reduce and build up this cards by column. So each iteration of this reduce we're going to get a card and put it into that cards by column and it's going to loop over that for every card and reduce that to a new state or transform it basically. So we're going to do cards by column and index in there with the cards column index and let's add a check here. If that 
doesn't exist will create the empty array and then push into it so we don't push into non-existent array and then at the end of reduce you always need to return cards by column so that iterates it through and it'll loop through or iterate through that reduce function for every card and put them into the right slot and then we return our new state here at the end on line 62 and we forgot to pass in the initial state for this reduce method so let's give it an empty array and we're getting an error here this needs to be this dot props and we need to put this guard clause back in here that prevents it from trying to render before the load action has applied the state so if the props dot cards by column dot length is falsy then we'll return null here and it seems to have corrupted the card so let's go switch over to the redox dev tools doesn't seem to want to open up here here we go and we can go ahead and check out what's going on in here so we can look at the action and it looks like card id zero which is an invalid ID because we have card ID 1, 2, and 3 here, so that is an invalid ID. Uh, so I think it's actually using the card index instead of the card ID. As you saw, the UUID there is much longer on the newly added cards right there. So we need to pass in the ID, not the index, because when it moves, we're getting a, you see there, it moved the wrong card. So it said move card ID 1, but it should have actually been that UUID. So here on move left and on move right need to be updated to say card ID. And that's actually card dot ID. And it looks like that is still not working. Let's see what's going on here. So let's change this to columns. So we're going to reduce over the columns. And we don't actually need the column. We're just going to take in the column index here. And instead of pushing each card, we're going to filter the existing cards. So we're going to say the cards at that column index are going to be the cards filtered where the cards column index equals that column index. And that seems to have fixed it. So now we can time travel debug and our app is back to a working state. Our refactoring seems to be complete. Let's go ahead and test here. It seems to be working well. Let's go ahead and step through those actions. Looks good to me. And so our reducer is now much simpler. It's like two or three lines of code because it's not dealing with nested state, although we did shift some of that complexity over to the selector. But we can clean that up uh, further. There's further room for improvements, but that will conclude this video.